Hey everybody, welcome back. Esoteric Ramblings here for part two of today's videos, my comic call review for Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me here. Um, today is the comic call rundown. By now you pretty much know the deal. I'm gonna run through the list, uh, mostly alphabetically. I'll give you my cover of the week and then my top three, which I'm sticking with the top three for the week. Uh, let's see here. I am going to start off with uh, the current uh, event book that's going on uh, between all the X books, the Ten of Swords miniseries event, X Men crossover, however you want to call it. So, up first is Wolverine number six, part three of 22 of the Ten of Swords. Uh, so, this story uh, takes place. We got the prophecy in the previous issue, uh, chapter two of what all of this was going to be about and the different heroes having to find their swords and Wolverine of course thinks he needs the Muramasa blade uh, so he's going after that part 4 of Ten of Swords is X-Force number 13 which is pretty much a direct sequel to that issue of Wolverine it uh, carries on where that story left off and just keeps going forward and Marauders 13 is chapter 5 of Ten of Swords. And this one is all about Storm and uh, the sword she feels she must uh, claim. And we've got another amazing, uh, of course, continuing the tribute to Chadwick Boseman and some more fantastic art tributes on the back of the Marvel books this week. All right, starting alphabetically, I'm going with my... J. Scott Campbell, Amazing Spider-Man cover, issue 49, Legacy 850. So this is the big deal, uh, issue 850 of Amazing Spider-Man, J. Scott Campbell art. Uh, this story kind of puts a lot of the threads they've been building together, uh, Nick Spencer and team, over the last however long it's been, year and a half, uh, with the new Spider-Man. Up next, Deadpool number seven. Uh, I think I said last time, I'm not a huge Deadpool fan myself uh, overall, but I really like the creative team on this book. I think they're doing a great job. And any book that has Elsa Bloodstone fighting monsters on a regular basis is a book I will read. So Deadpool number seven is a lot of fun. Up next is Die number 14. Uh, both covers. I've been uh, getting both covers for this series because they're just incredible art. And... I've always noticed on the back, they've got the unfolded 10 or 20-sided uh, die with the numbers. For some reason, I never noticed all the other numbers are on there before. So I'm gonna have to go back and look at my previous issues to see if they're highlighting, if it's the same graphic with the different number highlighted depending on the issue. Um, not that that's some great big thing, but it's something I just noticed, so. Image is giving us the next book, Inkblot number two, uh, continuing the fantasy adventures of this adorable, freaky-eyed little cat as it travels in the fantasy world uh, that is set up in Inkblot. This is a lot of fun. Uh, except fantasy is a series or a genre I will always be drawn to, at least try it out, and this one's kind of in the more fun, quirky side of it. And I'm real intrigued to see where this story is going. It feels like we're getting a lot of setup for what this world is like and the different inhabitants of the world and everything. So we'll we'll see where this goes. I'm enjoying it so far. All right. Also from uh nope, this is from Vault Comics, Money Shot number 9. Uh this book never f fails to bring the laughs and the humor and great art and great storytelling. Uh didn't make it into the top three this week, or the top five as it was last time, but is definitely um, one of the one of the great issues this week. So, Money Shot number nine out today. Star Wars seven, continuing the uh, storyline between the events of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Um, we've got different uh, battle groups of the Rebel Alliance being pursued by the Empire. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. You see some... Not that I need a whole lot of depth and personality to my villains in the Star Wars universe, but when they do 
make those choices to show that. Uh, they always do it really well. So I, I really enjoyed this week's issue, um, especially if you've read some of the earlier books showing some of Tarkin's background and his animosity with Vader. There's some definitely throwbacks to those stories from a couple years ago. Up next from IDW, we have TMNT, the best of Raphael. So they're doing one for each of the turtles. I really like this kind of stark, uh, just monotone, dutone cover. Uh, it's pretty great. And um, big issue, heavy, really heavy duty cover. Um, super glossy, as you can tell with the reflections there. But it it basically recaptures the, uh, the original macro series Raphael one shot from back in the day, the one from the beginning of the IDW series, and the one from, I think, a year or so ago, maybe two years now. Uh, so this collects three great Raphael stories, um, guest starring usually Casey Jones and Elopex from the new IDW series. So if you want just kind of, like it says, best of Raphael, this is definitely a book to check out this week. And the last in the basic rundown is Young Justice, number 19. Yeah, I really, I've really been enjoying this book. These are a bunch of characters that I've never really read much about before, um, but they've done a really good job. Bendis, I think, does a really good job of writing the younger superhero characters in the books he writes, and uh, this has been no exception. I really enjoyed uh, his miniseries Naomi and in introducing that new character. Um, so it's been a lot of fun uh, getting to know these characters a little bit. Um, over this series so far, and I can't wait to see where it goes. All right, comic cover of the week is Black Widow number two, the Adam Hughes cover. Um, sorry to every other book that comes out a week and Adam Hughes cover comes out. Uh, chances are it's, it's going to win. There's just something about his style and the quality of his work that just really blows me away every time. I just really like the design uh, concept of this with the, the three bars and you know the bullets and the lipstick and the gun and the or the firing guns up here and everything and just his expressions and faces on characters are, are really just incredible. So yes, Black Widow number two. And the art inside is also good. Um, uh, the whole the whole series is great. Um, is it Kelly Thompson, Elena Casagrande, Jordi Belair on writing art and colors, respectively. Uh, VCs Corey Petit on letters and Adam Hughes' cover artist. There's also a J. Scott Campbell and I think a um, Alex Ross cover as well for those Alex Ross portrait shots. Um, this series has been really good. Uh, Nat has gone missing and... Uh, Winter Soldier and Hawkeye have gone to try to find out what's going on. They find her kind of living like a basic suburban life out in California. Um, except maybe things aren't all as they appear. And uh, yeah, it's just got some fantastic art in here uh, that I really enjoyed. Um, and it's fun seeing where this story is going to go. Alright, top three of the week. So we're doing the countdown, three to one. So up first in spot number three from Boom Studios, we only find them when they're dead. Issue two from Al Ewing and uh, Simone DeMeo. This incredible cover. The covers and the colors and the storytelling in this series are great. So you've got this crew of these ships that go out and harvest these gigantic, massive dead beings in space and they process the different ores and things they find on them for survival. This crew has decided that they want to find one that's alive. Like why we only find them when they're dead. So they want to find a living one. So it's their uh, plan to break free of the convoy and the kind of working group and go explore space to try to find a living one. Up, I think I was trying to say four words at once there. So up next, at number two for the week, is Champions number one, Outlawed. Uh, this is picking up the Outlawed one-shot that came back way back in the spring. And uh, some of the other stories where the Champions were involved in a minor disaster at a school science fair. And how they have now passed a thing called Kamala's Law and instituted a new 
police force called CRADLE, acronym CRADLE, to prevent children under 21 or people under 21 being superheroes. Um, so this kind of picks up. Uh, it feels almost like the teen superhero version of Civil War, which is really interesting, and I'm really sad at the same time because Civil War II is kind of what spawned this team from forming to begin with, that they didn't like the way the adult superheroes were handling things. Um, so I hope if it goes that route, it comes to a better conclusion than uh, either of the Civil War stories. Um, yeah, because I think that was a thing. Uh, the, the teen superheroes, not to be weird or anything, just have always been an interesting story. That's what got me into the comics when I was a pre-teenager long ago, was that they were, uh, especially the X-Men, it was a team of these mutant teenagers who didn't fit in anywhere. Um, so depending on the books and how they're written, that's always been a draw to me to those teams. Um and with people like Iron Man, Captain America, and Superman, you kind of usually know where those stories are going to go. Uh, and I feel with teams like Young Justice and uh, the Champions, I really don't know where they're going to go. A lot of these characters are new, uh, completely new around the time these books started. Anyway, it's really good. I hope this is not a book that breaks my heart <laughs> in the end, but I am enjoying it so far. Amazing art, amazing storytelling. Um, Al Ewing, uh, Simone DeMeo. So it's it's the same creative team on these two books, which I did not put together until right now. So champions number one. We only find them when they're dead. Number two. Um, actually, we only find them when they're dead is written by Al Ewing, while champions is written by Eve L. Ewing. Um. I think the coloring is so different on them that they the the art style you can I, I'm thinking about it now I can tell it's definitely the same artist but they just uh, do some different things and different choices and what we'll, we only find them when they're dead compared to champions but they're both great they're both unique and I love them both all right the number one for the week as I've rambled on long enough here is, uh, I think I gave it away when I stacked the books up at the beginning of the video, Adventure Man Volume 4 from uh, Matt Fraction, the Dodsons, and uh, is it Clayton Cowles. So yes, Adventure Man from Image. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's this woman who finds out that she's connected to this past kind of 20s, 30s era pulp uh, heroes adventure squad and how that affects her and her family um, it's been a lot of fun I always like seeing people um, come into their powers for the first time and uh, figuring out what to do with it so this has been a lot of fun I can't wait to see where it goes next great storytelling great art um, they've they've chosen to do kind of like uh, not monotone but it's definitely more subtle color <clears throat> treatment inside the issues uh, just for instance the splash page they're all colored you know they've got different like more muted hues and stuff and I'm wondering if we're gonna get a big splash uh, when everything kind of clicks into place kind of like when Dorothy goes to Oz um, or if that's just the the route they've chosen to go either way it works um, but uh, it feels like something's off in the world like intentionally in the story and then things are starting to click for this character and I'm wondering if when that clicks and everything gets revealed or opened up, if there will be a shift in the art in some way. So anyway, there it is. My long rambling ramble <laughs> of my comic haul rundown for today, Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. Um, are you reading any of these? What do you think? Uh, what do you think about Spider-Man or these other things? I know there are other books out there that I'm not reading. Uh, I just don't have enough time to read everything so I know I'm probably missing some great books. What are you reading? What do you like uh, that isn't on my list? What, um, any suggestions you have for me? Anything you think I should check out? Yeah. So there it is. There's the ramble. There's the rundown. So I've got my uh, Hellfire Club Marvel Legends review up and now my comic haul for this week. And hopefully I'll have some more for you soon. Thanks, everybody. I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.